Phrases men say when they are emotionally unavailable. Not available to you, not available to anyone, maybe, probably, but, but certainly not available to you. That's what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. Before we get started today, I will mention my book. Dating, coaching, dating advice book is really what it focuses on, so if you're in need of that, check it out. And there's also the Audible version where I'm talking a lot and you can listen instead of reading it. So that's the thing. What else we got? In the description, there is a couple of free downloads where you can get texting guides and things about male dating personalities. There is a Facebook advice group. And finally, if you wanna work with me one-on-one, -on -one, link is in the description to do that. You fill out a form, my assistant chats to you, is like, yep, you can meet Mark, chat to Mark, here's Mark. Phrases men say when they're emotionally unavailable. So if you've watched my videos before, you will know what emotional unavailability is. If you haven't, it's basically this idea that I am a man or I am a woman and I do not want to actually allow myself to get closer to someone. I am emotionally unavailable to be connected. Now, couple of points with this. Emotional unavailability can look like He's just not that into you. In fact, often they're impossible to tell apart. So some of the stuff today, most of what we're talking about will be emotional unavailability. Some of it guys will also say when they're just not that into you, when, when they don't like you enough. Um, how do you tell the difference? You don't. Emotional unavailability, not that into you, same end. As I say, I'm gonna be focusing on the EU side today, but. It could, a guy could say these when he's not into you as well. Um, and then I'll also point out a couple where it's like, no matter what his actions are, if he says this to you, get out of there. Unless you like emotionally unavailable relationships. Now, no one ever thinks they're emotionally unavailable, by the way. Every man and every woman I ever talk to pretty much always say they are emotionally available. Maybe the one exception is if they just had a breakup, people are a little more aware of it there, but that's only a proportion of people. There's a lot more EU beyond that. So anyway, I've been talking a lot. So let's get to these phrases. Uh, number one, when a guy says, I have a lot of skeletons. This is not a good one you wanna be here, hearing, probably for obvious reasons. The guy is saying this, well, I mean, think about it. What is he really saying? He is saying, there is a lot of shit about me that is bad that is shameful. Could be parts of myself, could be parts of my history, things that have happened to me, but the bottom line is it's shameful. And this is hard because if he really has this belief, consciously or unconsciously, that there are all these bad things about him, what's gonna happen as soon as someone gets close? He's gonna run away or hide it or do something else to sabotage it. So I have a lot of skeletons. Not the best thing you wanna be hearing. If a woman says that to me, I'm very much thinking, okay, there's gonna be a lot of work for her to do to actually build intimacy. Is she really gonna to wanna to do that? Most of the time, the answer is not. She'd rather find a different distraction. So I have a lot of skeletons. Be weary. Uh, number two, all right, this one, this one's gonna surprise you. This one's gonna surprise you and it needs to be in this wording. If a guy says this in this wording, he is emotionally unavailable, you ready? You're the kind of girl I'd marry. Why is that bad? You think it, that's what I wanna hear. No, this is one of those ones where actions speak louder. Most of the time, if a really solid, secure guy is thinking that, he'll be actioning on it first. There are two common situations that are not that, that I see clients come to me with where a guy has said to them, you're the kind of girl I'd marry, and neither of them are good. One of them is when they're, being broken up with or when the guy is taking space. That is a clear indicator that in terms of emotional availability, he is not there and you're probably well above him. The other one is back at the beginning of the relationship, which is if someone is really, really verbal, as in love bombing, they will say stuff like this to love bomb you, to get you very into them. You're the kind of girl I'd marry. I'm in this fantasy. Let's have these types of kids and live in a house here. And oh, you're the girl that's I've been dreaming of. I just know it when I saw you, all of that. So you gotta be really wary of that. If it's happening at the end, if a guy's saying you're the kind of girl I'd marry, big one just means that he's not where you want him to be or where he feels he can be. If it's happening at the start and a guy says exactly that, you gotta be really aware of love bombing. Now, there, yeah, sometimes it can be good news. If it's happening in the middle of the relationship and, and the actions are leading the way and he's not trying to like say it to impress you or anything, that is one where actions speak louder. So, so don't freak out if you're like 12 months into a really solid relationship and he's saying it and all his actions are supporting it. That's okay. It's the start and the end 
where it's like, you're the kind of girl I'd marry, or you're the kind of girl I'd marry as he's breaking up with you. That's what you gotta watch for. That's the EU. Number three, uh, pretty common ones, and you should be able to figure these out. I wanna enjoy my freedom, or I don't wanna be tied down. That's basically men speak for a guy saying either I'm not where I wanna be in life to have commitment, or I'm not into you enough that you're making me rethink where I am in life is where I wanna be. Either way, same result, he is emotionally unavailable to you. Uh, number four, I sort of clued you in on this one at the beginning. I just broke up with my girlfriend. Enough said. Number five, I can't make any woman happy. I can't make any woman happy. No woman wants me. Now, I don't wanna, I don't wanna crucify guys who say this one, because I have seen examples where a guy has worked through his shit with this one. When a man says something like, I can't make any woman happy, he's sort of on a spectrum, like he's definitely got wounding, he's definitely got some pain, and he's on a spectrum somewhere from, I've just had a really shit relationship, but I'm trying to recover and there's wounding there, through to, I'm a complete victim-minded narcissist. Like he's somewhere along that spectrum. So if a guy says, I can't make any woman happy, you've got to kind of go, all right, he has shit, how is he showing up? Is he working on it? Are we doing this consistently together? As I say, I have seen, I don't want to crucify guys who say this one. I have seen guys work through this one. Um, it is work though. It's not one of those ones that's like going to go away without work and self-reflection and therapy or coaching, whatever it is. Uh, number six, number six, I'm really focused on work right now, or even I'm really focused on blank right now. Think about men. I had a really interesting conversation with a young woman recently and she said, you know, my boyfriend's like turning 30 this year, so he'll probably want kids in like the next five years, right? Because he's going to be 35. And 35 is an age where people want kids. I said, you're thinking like a woman. Women think in age, men think in achievement. The better question for a man is like, what do I need to do before I have kids? Or what do I need to have achieved? Now for every guy, it's different. Some guys, it's like, I need to make $10 million and own a country. For other guys, it's like, I just need to be growing the flowers that I wanna grow in my garden. So the, the thing is different. Um, but if a guy says, I'm really focused on blank, he is trying to give you a subtle message that you're not that important right now that other things are more important to him. It's not because you don't have value, don't get telling yourself stories about it. It's because he has other stuff that he wants to focus on right now, and it's not you. Number seven, all right, the separated fellas are gonna hate me for this one, uh, but it's pretty much true, you guys know deep down, I'm separated. I'm separated. Now, are there occasions, before, the, before you go attacking the comments, are there occasions where a separated guy is working hard, um, he's moving on, he's finalizing his papers? Yes, I've seen it. I have seen it, but it's very rare, ladies. It's very rare. You have to understand, the thing about men, when they're separating is like, men get the, if, if, if a man's in a bad relationship, first comes relief, then comes sadness. Whereas for women, it's the other way around. First comes sadness, then comes relief. So if a man is separating, usually not always, but usually it means that he hasn't pulled the final trigger on the divorce papers yet. He's just at the end of the relief portion and he hasn't hit the sadness portion yet. Separated men, I mean, it's, it's a no brainer if he's living or in some sort of situation with the ex. But even if he's not, you wanna see real progress. You wanna see a lot of work. You wanna see things moving forward. The, the vast majority of separated men, once they get the divorce, then they want to open date for a while. Then a year or two later, there's like thinking commitment again. So you probably got him like two or three years early. Number eight, if a guy says I'm bad news or you don't want to date me, anything like that sort of really talking himself down, you've got to ask yourself, would a really solid, secure partner who's going to be able to go through the shit and show up with me and do all the things, is he really going to say that a lot? Like really, like maybe once or twice if he's having a down day. I mean, we all say that those things occasionally, but if that sort of stuff is coming out regularly, it can be a real issue later on. Like I'm not good for P I'm not good for partners or for women. Again, it's sort of similar to that one before, which I said to you, uh, what was the one I said before? I can't make any woman happy. It's sort of similar to that. You've got to check if it's, is there a hell of a lot of repressed pain here? Am I dealing with a victim narcissist type person? Or am I dealing with someone who does have his self-esteem challenges, but he's showing up, he's working on them, he's consistent. You might be able to get away with it if he's that end of the spectrum. Number nine. All right, this one is very much dependent on the actions he takes afterwards. 
very much dependent on that because this can, this can actually be a complete 50-50. So this one's right in the middle. Uh, my mum or dad or brother or sister or family, da -da, whoever it is, doesn't support our relationship. If you hear this, you're at a fork in the road. The guy will either prioritize the relationship that needs to be prioritized and set boundaries with that family member. Or a lot of the times what I've seen is it goes the other way and he's kind of says stuff like this when he's pulling away or isn't able to prioritize your relationship. So don't think this one is crucifixion, just understand that it's a fork in the road one and it may be an EU sign if he is not able to prioritize your relationship. And number 10, I saved the best to last. Number 10, and this is the one, this, is, this one especially, words matter more than actions. This is, this is like the one time in life you can throw out the rule, actions speak louder than words. It's like the one time. And it is the time when a guy says, I'm not looking for a relationship. Other versions of this include, I don't have time for, or I'm not ready for, any of that. If he says any of those things, I'm not looking for a relationship things, the whole idea of actions louder than words can get thrown out and just take the words. Because he means what he says, because guys do this thing, Guys do this thing where they'll say that and it's like, hmm, I want to date this woman and it seems like she wants a relationship. Bugger. Don't want to hurt her feelings. Huh. I do want to have her around. I want to date her, but only casually. You know what? I will tell her I'm not looking for a relationship. Goes ahead and tell her. If she's cool with that, now I've told her if she keeps seeing me, I'm in the clear. For the next six months, I can be like, well, I told her I didn't want a relationship. So now, I'm, now, now I've done my side of things and guys will see you for like a long time after you've said that, after they've said that, because they're like in the clear. So beware of that. And leave a comment if you have encountered one of these. I'd love to hear what have you heard a guy say that's EU or have you encountered one of these? Please leave it in the comment below and hit the subscribe button with the little bell.